Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of 37th module on types of counseling, individual and group counseling. Counseling is a therapeutic process that involves interpersonal relationships and helps clients become more self-directive and self-reliant. Though counseling began as a person-to-person -person relationship in an individual context, group counseling also has a long and distinguished history. Individual and group counseling are two different types of counseling approaches that are differentiated based on the number of clients a counselor engages in a session. In individual counseling, the counselor deals with a single client, whereas in a group counseling, the counselor engages with multiple clients in a group. Both individual and group counseling has an important place in school counseling. The learning objective of this video is understanding the concept, needs, and process of individual counseling. Individual counseling. Individual counseling is a type of counseling where the counselor engages in a counseling relationship with one individual client. As such, a school counselor engages a student to solve the problem of the student. It is one-to-one -one professional relationship that enables trust and personal growth. In individual counseling, counselor facilitates the client to develop a better understanding, explore possibilities, and initiate change to solve the client's immediate or near future concerns. Need for individual counseling. Individual counseling is needed for various reasons, such as to help client develop a better understanding and new insights about their life to help client learn healthy coping strategies, to handle personal, emotional, and social concerns, to help client improve intrapersonal and interpersonal relationships, encourage the client to feel empowered to develop a new perspectives of life, and to facilitate client to develop necessary skills and techniques to help confront their concerns and problems. The process of individual counseling. The individual counseling process involves establishing relationship with the client, problem identification and exploration, planning for problem solving, and implementation and termination. First stage, establishing relationship with the client. The establishment of relationship between the counselor and the client lays the foundation of the counseling process. The relationship established between the counselor and the client itself is the core of the counseling process. The quality of the relationship will determine the effectiveness of the counseling process. In this stage, the counselor initiates the initial interview to establish a conducive environment to develop mutual respects, trust, free and open communication, and a general understanding of what the counseling process involves. The counselor's primary responsibility always remains to attend to the client's need and maintain a therapeutic relationship with the client. The counseling relationship seeks to assist the clients in assuming the responsibilities for their problem and its solutions. Establishing a therapeutic relationship with the client is facilitated when the counselor is able to understand the client through attending skills identify clients' feelings through observation and attentive listening, reflect and enabling the client to have a deeper understanding of themselves and the ability to identify and gain insight into the client's concerns and need. Second stage, problem identification and exploration. The establishment of therapeutic relationship enables the clients to become more receptive to an in-depth exploration of their problem. During the exploration, counselors should gather all the relevant information regarding the client to understand the situation better. Then, counselor with the cooperation of the client attempts to identify the problem, define the problem as precisely and objectively as possible, then explore the possibilities of changes required and obstacles that exists for these changes to materialize. Third stage, planning for problem solving. Once the counselor determines all the relevant information 
regarding the client's problem are gathered. Counselor tries to understand the client's problem from a proper perspective. The counselor then facilitates the client to develop awareness and insight into the fact that something needs to be done about a specific issue. The counselor moves on to create a plan of action in collaboration with the client to remediate the client's concern. Fourth stage, implementation and termination. After the remedies have been formulated, the counselor encourages the client to implement the problems, determine solution in the final stage. The counselor maintains contact with the client during the entire time when the client is implementing the problem solution actively as the client may need counselor's assistance if things do not go according to the plan. This contact also acts as a source of follow-up to support and motivate to the client. Once it is determined that counselor and the client have dealt with the client's concern to the maximum possible extent, the counseling process can be terminated. In this video, we have discussed about the concept, needs, and the process of individual counseling. In the next video, we will focus on the techniques of individual counseling, concept, needs, and the goals of group counseling. Thank you.